Hi guys, and welcome back to The Effect. Today is our second episode of our Disney Q&A series. We are doing four videos of our Q&A series. Today's video was our questions that were sent in on Instagram. 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 IG. The gram, as all the cool kids <laughs> say. And we are so excited to answer these questions for you guys. We had so many responses, and I am so excited that... We get to share our Disney, share our Disney thoughts and opinions. Um, if you asked a question that was already answered in our first video, that video is late, early, later in our page. Um, so you're going to be able to go click our first episode of our Q&A series to see the answer to that question if you see that we didn't answer it in this video. But today we have 10, count them 10, Great questions to answer for you guys. And I don't know about you, Callie, but I'm ready to roll. I'm ready to roll. So, if you're brand new, like, subscribe, comment, share, ring that bell to make sure that every time I post, you see our videos. And it's just one click away. It's just one click away. Join the Dell Effect family and let's get started. All right. So, the first question that we got asked was what are our thoughts on a Disney proposal? This is making me red. Um, but I think if you do it, that's not cliche in my opinion. Um, so when I think so when you think of like proposals at Disney, you think in front of the castle, you think of in front of the big icon of the parks, but just being. Like, but we witnessed a lot of proposals throughout the whole park. Yeah, we really did. We really did. Our, we spent a couple of days in the parks um, her first week she was here and just seeing all the proposals and everywhere was just so amazing. I think a Disney proposal is amazing, in my opinion. Um, I've always said I'm going to propose in Disney World because it's my, my happy place. So When I went to Disney World and... 2012 it was my first time and the moment I stepped into Magic Kingdom I said yep <laughs> I want to be proposed there but when we when we see proposals throughout the parks at certain places yeah. it, it doesn't have to be in front of the, the castle it really doesn't. I mean it could be a ride that a is meaningful to you both yeah. or or a resort you stayed at or just any Disney memory that you have um, it's so, the magical place on earth. Why not make it more magical? That is true. And I don't mean if you're gonna propose in front of the castle, please. If the do castle it. is your happy place, do it. I did not mean anything negative by that opening comment. But when I think of a Disney proposal, I think of being able to, like Callie said, share that experience with a ride, a show, a parade. A res resort anything on Disney property I think a Disney proposals are so m magical and make it even make you fall in love all over again so question number two that we got was when is the best time to go to Disney World and this question is perfect but it's kind of vague yeah like when's the best time to go when there's not a lot of people or when is the best time to go that is true. Because That's the holidays, I mean... You can't beat Christmas time in the Magic Kingdom. Right. You can't beat Christmas time. You can't beat Halloween time in the Magic Kingdom as well. And New Year's Eve. And New Year's Eve. You literally... But if you don't want to... If you're talking about you don't want to be around a lot of people, mm -hmm. then that would be a no-go. Yeah. I would say, personally, the best time to go, if you want just, just a... Your first experience, you don't want no one around, like not as not as crowded. February, early March, not very. When you think of March, April, May, you think of those spring breakers. You think summertime. You think everyone's home from school. You think of all of those different factors that come into play with people. So early in the year, like those first couple months of the new year, January, February. Even those first couple weeks of March. I say that's the best time to go for being like if you don't want to be around a crap ton of people. But if you want to see all of those amazing experiences for the holidays, definitely come during Christmas time. Um, being able to work work in the during the Christmas time too is just, just a magical experience too. 
So I would say that that question is pretty. You can answer it either way. But it's a great question. It is a great question. So we appreciate. So we answered it. both of it. Yeah, we got you. Yeah. Yeah. So our next question is, how is the Tower of Terror doing? So the Tower of Terror at Hollywood Studios. Um, you know, we haven't got a chance to go to studios yet. Um, not yet, but, but we will be future vlog. We are going to Hollywood Studios this month. So oh. we can get back to that question yeah. on the next... The next time we go there. Yeah. So we'll be able to let you know how our stay is at the Tower of Terror. Hopefully we can ride it like three times. Or four. So question number four that we got was, what are three must-dos, count them, three, that you must do when you were in Walt Disney World for the first time? And at Disney World, there is just so much to do at, from all the attractions, from all the food, from all the entertainment options. But we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep to the question and just give three must-dos together. So. Callie, what do you think is the first must do? I mean, I don't know about the first, but I would say definitely try the snacks. Definitely. Disney has so many different snack options, from a Mickey pretzel with cheese to a churro to anything you can think of. My favorite's just the simple popcorn. Simple popcorn, <laughs> literally. Simple popcorn, but at Disney, it's just, it just seems more magical. Um, I would say for the second thing to do as a must do is try and hit all the big name rides if you can, but don't have it planned out, though. have it planned out, but don't be hesitant to go ride some of those smaller name attractions. You might um, like them. You might like them a lot. Um, at Disney, every ride tells a story. Every ride from the minute you get on to the minute you exit tells a different story. And that's what I think Disney does compared to any other theme park in the world. That is the best. So I would say that's the two of them. And then do you have a third? Do you think of a, can you think of a third? I mean, I don't know. I would say take it all in, but yeah. uh, what do you think? I agree with that um, because you never know. It might be the first time you go and then the next time you go is five years later from five years later. Um, you never know the next time you get to go to Disney, but every time you do go to Disney, or if it's just that first time, Disney people just know to take it in. People just know to listen to all the different music around the parks. People know to just relax while they're in the parks. And just try to just take it in. What's the last thing you do before you leave a park? Me? The last thing I do is I turn back and I look at the main icon. So like... If we're in Magic Kingdom, I walk all the way down Main Street and I take my last glimpse at Cinderella's Castle. So you're taking it all in. You're taking it in. That is very true because you never know. You never know the next time you'll be able to go to a Disney park. So snacks, attractions, and taking it in. Top three. Hey, Del. Hey, what? Is it true that there's secret sounds you can hear down on Main Street? There are secret sounds that you can hear down Main Street, and it's something that's really cool. Um, it's something that Disney did to be able to create more of that experience for our guests. And one of those is being able to hear voices in the windows. Um, a special spot you can do that's on Center Avenue. And while you're walking down Main Street, where you're the caric caricatures are, you make a quick right, and you go to Center Avenue, and you there's a window. There's a window that says music lessons, dance lessons, voice lessons, um, and you can actually hear someone tap dancing. You can actually hear someone singing. And it's those little touches that Disney does that makes their park stand out. But what's the meaning behind that? The meaning behind it is that was a big thing in Marceline, Missouri. Main Street USA is based off of Marceline, Missouri, where Walt grew up. And just being able to, he literally painted the picture of Marceline, Missouri, and made it into Main Street, USA. So being able to like just experience those things that Walt experienced was so cool. And a sec another one, this is another one in general that not a lot of people know about, is if you go to the hat shop, you go to the hat chapeau shop, there's a phone there. There's a phone that you can actually pick up. 
and if you put it to your ear, you actually hear dialogue in a conversation um, from Imagineering, Imagineers and Walt and being able to hear those things like you just pick up the phone. Um, it's just the little things that you get to see and experience while you're in the park. It's truly, there's, it's, there's no words for it. It's like truly amazing, truly amazing. Okay, so we're gonna kind of switch it over to just you for a second. Me. So. Me. What has been your favorite role so far? And if you could have a different role or choose a different role, what would it be? That's a fantastic question. Um, so fun fact: at Disney World, I've had two roles. I've only had two roles. I've had custodial and guest relations, and. While both roles were amazing, my favorite role out of the roles was guest relations. I have been, I've dreamed of being a guest relations cast member since I was nine years old. I've dreamed of wearing that plaid costume and being able to fix people's trips from fixing their fast passes to fixing their dinner reservations to just enhancing that Disney culture enhancing that disney experience to every guest that comes through our gates um so guest relations has been my dream and i am so happy that i got to live that dream for a period of time with the way the world is we will see if that dream gets to become a reality soon again um but you take it day by day and you take everything every opportunity that you have um i'm gonna say currently to the role that i have with my third third party organization, third party operating participant, uh, Sunglass Hut, they have welcomed me with open arms. They have welcomed me with love and appreciation and I'm so thankful for every single one of them as well. So I'm thankful for them. Um, but a role that I dream of having is Bob Iger, if you're watching this, um, I wanna be in your shoes one day. I wanna be a CEO of Disney. Um, but Josh Tomorrow, if you're watching this too, your role. I've always dreamed of having your role. And Ambassador Steven, Steven, I've dreamed of being an ambassador and I would love to be able to shadow you one day and be able to learn how it is to be the face of the company. Um, so those are some dream roles that I would love to have, but my favorite role that I did get to share in my time with Disney is guest relations. So we are at question number seven. And we were asked, what are the best Disney travel hacks and tips to get the most bang for your buck? So this could be from saving money on food, saving money on merchandise, saving money on just your whole experience. You pay a lot of money to get here and you don't want to waste your, waste in a sense, waste your money um, by not being able to do a whole lot of things. Um, so for example, um, being able to get those big name attractions, I would say being able to get to the parks early in the morning to ride those big name rides. The wait times aren't as bad. Um, you get the bang for your buck because you are paying for those big hitter attractions because when you think of the Magic Kingdom, you think of you think of the Three Mountains, you think of Seven Doors Mine Train, you think of Peter Pan's Flight, you think of all these big name rides that you're paying lots of money to come ride and being able to experience. So if you don't want to wait three hours for those rides every time you come, um, so I would say always come in the morning. If you come in the morning, if you want to hit those big name rides, um, food options. Um, Callie, you were just talking about how you can bring a lunch, bring your own lunch. You um, can bring food and drinks in. Yeah. As long as they're not glass. Yeah, as long as it's not glass, and with the container style, like as long as it hits the guidelines of like if it's not too big, um, you are more than welcome to bring like lunch meat sandwiches you can bring bottles of water um going back to bottles of wa like water in general florida it's hot here um you want to be able to hydrate so if you have like a water bottle you can actually ask for water cups cast members if you know you know um, being able to ask for water cups you are able to go to those quick service restaurants get a cup of iced water put it in your water bottle and you're not paying for a three three dollars and fifty cent bottle of water, so that's a way of saving money. Um, I would say also with food, 
more quick service restaurants compared to sit down. Sit down. Um, yeah. Our sit down restaurant meals can be a little pricey, um, but that's just because they the level of service and the level of experience too is just phenomenal. But that's these are just tips on saving money. Yeah. Like, they're totally worth going to, I think. Oh my gosh, like, yeah. Me and Callie on have been... On the terms of saving money, yeah, quick me, service is the way to go. Me and Callie have been to some amazing restaurants <laughs> yeah. so far. And our... Great experiences. Great experiences. Good but, food. But our, our wallets, you know, just at the end of the meal, they're like, they lose a lot. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's just all about... We're here to help you save money, too. Um, so being able to do those experiences and being able to save every penny you can. Um, Callie, you also said about going to the resorts, uh, staying at a resort, um, and taking those modes of transportation for gas, like you're saving gas money. Um, so yeah, because if you don't stay at a Walt Disney World resort, you're staying outside mm -hmm. of, of the resort and that's gas money getting in there. Yeah. And depending on how how uh, traffic is, it could take a little bit to actually get to the place you're wanting to go. Plus your type of vehicle too, when you go to the park to park, it could be more expensive. Um, but while you're staying at a Disney resort, um, you have that fee that you pay at the end of your stay. Um, and it actually, at the end of the week, it saves you a lot of money. Um, so those are just some money tips to think about, um, the way to help you save money. Um, while you come to our parks, um, you can do you can drive to the park if you want um, It's just ways to help you save money All right, so we have a very good question something I didn't even know about um, But Dell is it true that there's a tree woman in Animal Kingdom and if so explain this Well, I wouldn't say she's a tree woman, but I would say she is a divine woman um her name that she goes by is Divine. Um, she hangs out at Animal Kingdom. Um, so while you are walking around the park, um, there is a chance that if you're looking at the wildlife, like like trees, and like you're looking in the trees, um, all of a sudden you might see some blinking. And then you might, all of a sudden, you might see a little movement. And then all of a sudden, Divine shows up out of nowhere. Um, it is an entertainment option and divine usually hangs out at animal kingdom but the way that the world is right now um a lot of our entertainment friends um are not with us at the moment um so divine has not made an appearance yet since the world but we are hoping divine comes back really really soon so we have two questions left um we want to just thank you guys for these questions that you sent in. Um, these are just so, so much fun to answer and just talk about with you guys. Um, so our, se our second to last question is, what is something you, you wish Disney would bring back to the parks? And we are going to answer this in two different ways. So we're going to answer it like stuff they've taken away. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to talk about stuff that is not happening due to the COVID right now. That's so true. what's one thing that they've taken away completely that you wish they'd bring back? Due to COVID or? No, just. The... Oh, okay. In general. Um, so I might get a lot, I might get hate from this. Um, I hope I don't, but I am a fan of the new test track, but old test track in my opinion was just better. Um, just from the amount of detail inside, um, you actually got to see while you were in the queue cars, like the actual testing that they did on cars. Um, and I just, the overall feel, I like the futuristic stuff's cool. Um, but I just miss old test track. Um, so that's one thing that I wish that Disney would bring back. Okay, so then what's a couple of things you wish they'd bring back that they've taken away due to COVID? Which is a lot, but I mean... So a lot of the entertainment options. So like... The parades. The parades. The meet and greets. The meet and greets. Festival <laughs> of the Lion King. That was the dog. That was our doggy. Um, so a lot of the character... A lot of the entertainment options. Um, Disney's doing a great job with Calvacades and still finding ways to see our, our friends. Um, but just from all of the different shows that are gone and just all of the different um, 
characters that you got to meet. That is just a, a part of the Disney experience that makes it just so much more magical. So I wish Disney would find ways to bring back more entertainment options and character meet and greets. But from a ride perspective, I wish that they brought back old Test Track instead of new Test Track. So we are at our last question and we saved this question for last because you have to think about you it. You have to think about it, but it also when you think of Walt Disney himself, Walt Disney always preached that we're always moving forward and always building on to what we have. So the if question you think this is a good idea, sponsor us. Yeah, sponsor us. Um so the question was if you could add a ride to Walt Disney World based off of a movie or character what would the ride be and what where would you put it and it is I know mine but I am a gentleman so I would love for Callie to go first okay I actually have two deal okay deal the first one I don't know I might need your help okay where it might go but I'm thinking 101 Dalmatians ride and you are on a Dalmatian going through that's cute what could be the movie that's cute I love that so that could be like a dark ride it could be a fantasy land they could, I agree I think I they agree. could put that in fantasy land for sure but what's your second one I'm thinking uh Wreck-It Ralph in future future world okay. over at, over at Epcot yes oh what kind of ride so, would it be I'm thinking it would take us, you would start on the inside of the outlet and it'll take you through each person's game. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Like you're like a POV? Yes. That'd be cool. That would be, those are two great rides. I would ride those in a heartbeat. But what's yours? So my first one would be going to my favorite land in Walt Disney World, which is Tomorrowland. Um, I think Big Hero 6 needs some love. Um, I think they could create an experience like Flight of Passage where you are on the back of Baymax and you were flying around San Francisco trying to defeat villains with the big Hero 6. Um, I think it would be such a fun attraction. I think it would be the way that a lot of attractions are going um, in the realm of theme parks with that virtual reality. Um, so I think just flying on the back of Baymax would be really cool. Um, now I want to think of a second one because you had two really good ones. Um, I would bring back an attraction sim similar to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, but I would theme it to Atlantis. And I would make it as you were on the actual ship. Like the, the ride vehicles would be the ship from the actual movie Atlantis. Um, and you are sitting in the ship and Milo Thatch is with you. They have an animatronic of Milo Thatch on the attraction. Um, and he is your guide. And it's just a smooth ride that takes you smooth, kind of like that virtual style, but smooth boat ride. You're going through, you're going down below and then you finally hit Atlantis. And then you exit and there's an Atlantis gift shop. But I think that could go towards the well, near the seas with Nemo and friends, like in that area of Epcot. I want to change mine. Okay, what what's going no? On? I don't want to change it. I want to add to it. Okay, on the Dalmatian. Yeah. I want us to be following the Dalmatians. Oh, like we're walking, like, as like, if like we're walking them, or blocking something. the Dalmatians. That'd be so cute. I love that. I love that. I would ride all four of our rides. Comment down below if you would ride our rides. And just like that, this Q&A has come to an end. We want to thank everyone who sent in questions and thank you for everyone who watched this Disney Q&A. It is just so much fun to be able to answer your Disney questions and being able to have conversations about it. Um, it's so much fun to be able to relate to you guys on a Disney level that makes us closer as people. Um, we are a huge Del Effect family that is coming together that spreads love and spreads positivity and I am so thankful for every single one of you that like subscribe comment share and ring the bell every time I post it means the world to me I know Callie truly appreciates it because Callie's my number one supporter 
Um, so it means a lot to the both of us that you follow and like our videos. Seriously. It's you guys why we make the videos. So there's a lot of content coming to 2021. A lot of different content that Thanks we Thanks for some input. Yeah. Seriously. We I have some, all my we Yeah, some... we have very good input. Um, on for my new content this year. Uh, yeah, for real. So we are so excited to be able to create those videos for you. I have huge goals for my 2021 for my content creating, um, but those goals are going to be in our next video. In my next video, um, I will be filming the video when Callie is at work. Um, so I will be showing sharing you guys my goals for 2021 as a content creator. So if you are brand new. Welcome to the effect. <laughs> if you've been here since day one. Continue to make a difference. Beautiful memories with beautiful people. That is what we create here. We out. <laughs> and because of that, we will see you in the next video. Much love to all of you. And where the movie started, facing at a photo they've taken. Space tree flying through the skies and battles happen. And